Alumni Association and a big supporter of our breakfast. Got a lot of other ones. What's going on at the high school now? First of all, you're 1960 guys. You got to get out of the phone and get your father Timothy and father Joel Kim to come here. I try to pull their strings this morning at breakfast, and they, oh, I got to work on my sermon and this and that. So if you guys pester them, they'll, they'll come more than than I can do. <coughs> so I just want to tell you, Benedictine it started with a very good uh, sign. We we had a big jump in enrollment. And the official figures are this. We graduated a very small senior class because this, these were the guys affected by the recession. And over the last four years, a number of them had to drop out because they, they couldn't afford to pay the tuition. So we graduated 55 seniors and we welcomed 139 freshmen. Wow. That's probably our biggest freshman class in about seven years. It's causing problems. We had to order more desks, so that's a good problem. But when you're thinking about your annual gift to the school, remember we got more kids, so we need more money. So, you know, five dollars is nice, but put a zero after it. <laughs> okay. Secondly, um, we have a lot of youth movement going on in the school. You should get your Aura at Labora magazine this week in the mail. It's at the post office now. We're, trying to, we're going to try to have the Aura at Labora about every three months, a smaller edition, like about eight or nine pages. We wait and wait, and then more stories come, and more stories come, and then by the time we get it out, it's not manageable. So on the cover will be our two young athletic people, our new head coach, Joe Schaefer, and our new athletic director, uh, Chris Lorber. Both of them are 28 which makes me feel really old when that happens. The head coach and the athletic director used to be grumpy old men all the time. <laughs> now they're young guys. We got our clock clean last night at Bedford, a terrible game, nothing went right. But uh, the previous two weeks, we scored 64 points, including a game against Steubenville, which is no pushover. So I don't know what happened last night. Everything, everybody was one of those things. Even the, even the field goal. Uh, we have a good field goal kicker, and they hit the post. So I mean, things that you can't predict. But uh, Benedictine continues to uh, try new things out, and we're in uh, the second year now of what's called the Priory system, where we divide all the students into little groups of 12, and we mix them: seniors, juniors, freshmen, sophomore. And we have a teacher and a staff member with each of these groups. And the idea is to bring the school a little closer together <laughs> so you don't have seniors picking on freshmen and things like that. And to try to make the students feel part of something sooner. Because we get a lot of students that are the only one from their grade school. I celebrate Mass at George's Parish out in Avon, Ohio. And you say, Avon, that's another county. Well, we got four or five counties of students at Benedictine. And the smartest kid from their eighth grade picked Benedictine last year. He was at the football game last night, uh, uh, Michael Bain. He's in the choir. He sings with George up in the choir. And for when you get one person from a school, a lot of times they're friends from other schools. You know, why don't you switch and transfer over here? So attrition means losing students. is something we've been working on. And with this new priory system, I think we only lost about 15 kids over the summer. About five of them were people that we asked not to come back. So that seems to be helping us out with that. So that, and uh, we continue, all the students have computers. I'm a teacher 35 years, and this year's the first time I'm learning how to give quizzes on the computer. <laughs> and the, the attractive thing is, well, they have to be multiple choice. You make the quiz up, and the kids take it, and it grades it, and it puts it in your grade book automatically. <laughs> and that's how I first got interested in computers, because Vince, the son, and, and I are classmates, class of 71, and we're considered old timers at the school. And when all these, this computer stuff was going on, we were resisting, until I found out that you could have your grades done in five minutes, <laughs> when I would take all night, I never drink coffee, but the night before my grades were due, four times a year, 
I would drink three cups of black coffee and stay up all night with my calculator figuring grades. When I saw the younger teacher hit the button and all of a sudden the grades are all figured, I said, I'm going to learn this. <laughs> so there is motivation for, for uh, advancing in technology. Uh, we ask you to keep us in your prayers at the monastery because within the year we have to elect a new abbot. Our abbot Christopher, uh, who's 66 years old, resigned in July and was accepted by the abbot president. He is a former teacher at the school for about 13 years. In about 15 years, he was pastor of our parish in Broadview Heights. He's had up and down episodes in his life of, of poor health. And he had big heart surgery in December, and he still isn't fully back from it. So uh, uh, Father Gary Hoover, who's the prior, class of 74, the son of Dorothy Miho, who you guys remember in the main office, some of you guys, Father Gary is the administrator of the Abbey until we are ready to have an election. So somewhere keep us in your prayers. We have 31 monks, and what's nice is we have six younger guys in training. We've been able to be getting vocations uh, coming to the monastery, which is nice. So uh, two seminarians we have uh, that are studying at St. Vincent's in Pennsylvania, and uh, uh, several that are in town here in their training. So uh, also uh, our oldest monk, Father Placid, had his 95th birthday this summer, and he's at the uh, Regina Nursing Home out in, in, in uh, uh, Bridgefield. Not because he lost his marbles, he's just unsteady on his feet. And I'll tell you one little story here. I got to watch, because you post these things on YouTube, and I get in trouble. <laughs> but, but um, no, the last time I did my Sam Miller imitation, then I went home, I found out it was on YouTube. <laughs> I, was I saw him this week. He still remembers Benedictine. Remembers Benedictine. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Chuck Knoll, as you know, is 81 now, and uh, he's been very private and doesn't like people to know his business, and his family's very protected of him. I, I visited him a year and a half ago. So anyway, the family has decided to allow a, an official biography to be written. And they have a sports writer from St. Louis who is pursuing information. So he called me up and he said, could I come to Benedictine and see any pictures and information you have about Chuck Knoll? So I let him talk to Joe Hornack. I said, that was one of Chuck Knoll's best players in all this. So, <laughs> anyway, we were trying to get him to talk to some people that you know, were classmates. So I said, would you want to talk to one of his teachers? He said, one of his teachers? I says, yeah. So I took him out to see Father Placid in, in uh... the athletic department needed an ice machine, which we've transferred money to them. And the ice machine is down there now for concessions, because we have CYO games there. They also needed a new utility vehicle, because I guess the other one got stolen. Um, so we're working on purchasing a utility vehicle, and it's going to be one caveat, it's going in the new bus garage. Does anybody know anybody at a golf course that can give us a good deal? We need, uh, 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 they call it a... It's, it's like a, a gator or something. It's, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it, it has to pull something that, that conditions that field. But some of you guys at golf three days a week... I know Joe Salemi who owns golf course. Even if it's not working. No, you say gators. I know yeah. we've got a bunch of them there. Yeah, because if we get a like good deal on it, our, our mechanic, see, the last one we had was somebody gave it to us. It wasn't even working. It was in real bad shape. He's a good Italian Catholic, so. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. 